So Steve and I are getting ready to put a new thermostat in my Ford Exhibition. This one happens to be a 2012, so this video should be the same from like 07 all the way up to 2014. All, the, all these expeditions with a 5.4 motor in it. It shouldn't be very hard to do, but this truck has 212,000 miles on it on the original thermostat. So it's time to pull that sucker out of here. Uh, the code that I was getting was a PO128 code. Which a lot of times with the mileage on this truck, you know, it should be a thermostat. You know, it could also be like a temperature sensor or something like that. But I'm willing to guess it's a thermostat going bad on it. And uh, we'll show you what's involved in doing this job. All right, so we're going to go in and start um, draining the coolant. So we're going to take the cap off and we're going to get it up in the air so that we can get the uh, uh, valve on the radiator to open up the petcock. And so we're going to put it up and then we'll come back here and we'll show you how to drain it. You got the petcock up here, the red thing, and it's just like a little red round knob. So we're going to try and crack this thing loose with some pliers here. We don't have to drain the whole radiator. We're just draining the level down a little bit. Right. You don't have to take all of the antifreeze out of it. Took the pet cock. We're, let, we're loosening the screw now. And we got some time, so we're not gonna get it so it pisses out crazy. We're just gonna. These things always seem to make a mess. Yep. Alright, so we're going up the thermostat. We're gonna take this ductwork off. We got an 8 millimeter here. Got one here. Off. Pull this off here. There, we got our thermostat. It's right in your face, right, right there. Down here. Yep. So it's nice that it's right there. And you know, a lot of guys like want to just take the dirt, the two bolts off. It's kind of hard to get the you know the neck to back down. You want to just have the neck. The radiator and the gooseneck here just sit right back on this two 516 bolts. I'm gonna crack them loose by hand. We are gonna take the spring clamp off and reuse it. I want to put it back together. I want the hose off of this neck when I go to put the, this neck down just by itself. I don't want the hose pushing it or anything like that. So we're gonna take the clamp, slide the clamp back, and we'll get the 516 and crack these two loose. Pliers for the clamp. Okay, so we got the hose off here. Tuck it up out of the way over here. We've got the two eight millimeters here. And it cracked down the moose. Get down and crack loose. Okay, we hand crack the moose, so if we want to use the impact gun now to zip them up. So our housing recesses down in here, these can get corroded up. So we're gonna run this on the Y wheel, clean this all up. And then you've got your O-ring sitting on top of your thermostat recessed down in the hole here. So at this point, we're gonna close the pet clock so we don't lose any more antifreeze. We'll pull off our thermostat housing, thermostat out now. We're gonna clean the, coal, the hole out. You know, we're showing some white corrosion over in here. We want to just take a little piece of sandpaper and clean this all up nice and clean. We got our new thermostat in there, put a little thin coat of grease on the O-ring here, and then our thermostat housing, we're going to wire wheel, and then we'll sit it back in place. So right now we're closing the pet clock. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, and we're going to pluck the thermostat out. Try it out. It doesn't want to 
believe it's home. It's been in there forever. Okay. So, like we were saying, we're gonna clean up this in here, clean this all up. So we're gonna sandpaper it all down and we'll come back to you shortly and we're gonna wire wheel our thermostat. thermostat, sit it in place, put a little grease on it, and we'll get it down in place here. Okay. So I got a new Ford thermostat and a new Ford gasket. I'll put a link to this to these in the description of the video. Yeah. And it's just gonna match it up like we always do. Going to get the pot number on there for that. There's a pot number right there. Okay. And we're going to just get a little bit of grease and we're going to set it into the housing and then we'll put some grease on our roll ring. Got the thermostat, I'm going to set it down in place. Obviously, you know it goes this way down. I'm going to put some grease on our thermostat boring here and just got a thin coat on it this goes down into the housing so what's the grease helping to do this keeps it lubricant when you're slipping your new housing in there i was always taught to never put these in dry you put a little on the edge i mean then when you tighten this down you'll see grease come out the sides and you kind of know that you had an even torque here you know you torqued it down evenly <clears throat> Everything's clean. It sits right down in easily. We're going to put a little grease on our bolt threads. These are very clean. I don't feel that I have to wire wheel these at all. So, yeah, they actually look pretty good. Grease on them. You can use dielectric grease, whatever you want to use. Just want to make sure your housing stays down in place. Yeah, it's kind of why we took the hose off so the hose isn't putting tension on that. Correct. That neck. Yeah. I want to make sure this thing goes down evenly. I didn't want to run them in with the gun. Now I can tighten them by hand. Okay, just gonna quarter drive ratchet. I'm doing even turns. I'm just snugging this up by hand. These are six millimeter threaded bolts. You, you don't have to kill them. Okay, that's tight. That's tight. Okay, remember this thing had this blue dot right here and the clamp was lined up right there with it. So I want my clamp to be in the same spot 
and I'm just going to slide my clamp back, just a whisker here. There it is right there. Oh, I hit the lock on it. Shit. There's a little lock on the back side of this clamp. There you go. And it just sprung past it. So I got my clamp. I got to move it. It's not in the same groove yet. So I got to just slide this clamp up just to see more, hear more. I just try and get it back in the same exact spot. That's all I'm trying to do. Not really necessary, but okay. So we got it squeezed on there. All right, we're refilling the antifreeze and we're gonna pressure test it. And um, then we'll put the ductwork back on. And if you're your expedition, you may have orange antifreeze so if you want to refill with the orange stuff. It's actually like a reddish color. Is it? Yeah, I just yeah. bought some for my 14. Yeah, it's like a reddish color. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna let this thing burp down and we'll get the pressure tester on it. All right, so we're gonna pressure test the cooling system because we put the new thermostat in. We've only got one connection we dealt with. We shouldn't have a leak, but we're gonna show you guys how to do it. So this has a smaller radiator cap than you know the older vehicles used to have. Some of them have threads that thread on, some of them have a smaller radiator cap, some have the original. So there's different adapters that adapt to this. So this would fit like an old style 1970 Chevy Chevelle and it fits all the way up into the 80s and the 90s and then they changed everything around. So now you need an adapter to go from smaller to bigger and that's what we have here. Um, we'll tighten this on. And then we'll put this on. You spin this around, you lock it in place, and then you release the tension. So now it's locked. Now we're gonna put air into this. And they have pump ones, you know, that you can pump. But we've gone to the air style now. Steve's gone high tech. <laughs> tired, of, tired of pumping that thing, so. Um, these are used on trucks a lot more because the systems are much bigger. So now you're gonna look in your radiator cap and it's gonna tell you 16 pound PSI. So you don't wanna go above the 16 pound PSI. So you open the valve up and you'll see where it's going. And we wanna stop at 16 pounds and that's where we're at right now. And this regulator adjusts that. So um, the last vehicle we did was a little higher obviously. So it's 16 pounds. Now we've disconnected, we're still holding at 16 pounds. And now we wanna look for leaks on the vehicle. So we want to look, make sure there's no leaks around our housing. Now, we had talked about putting the grease on the, on the housing. See how the grease is at the bottom here, all the way around? That, so that's telling us that we have a, we, this is flat, it's tight. So as it tightened down evenly, the grease squished out all the way around the ends, and that goes all the way around the thermostat on both sides of it. So we know we have an even, tight clamping surface. So right now we don't have any leaks. Um, and what's great about this is you don't have to run the vehicle, get it hot, and then look for leaks. So you're, you're looking right now, the system is cold, we've pressure tested, and you know, we're not moving. So we're still at our 16, 17 pound mark here. So we stayed at the 16 pound, I should say. So I kinda don't wanna go, you know, you go close to the 16 pounds, maybe 15 pounds, and that's kinda where we're at. Um, it's an old vehicle, I don't wanna, you know, like a, a weak chain link, you know, the weakest link breaks, We're trying not to do too much pressure on it. So, um, but we have no leaks right now, so we know that we're good. So now the, the manufacturer tells you not to release this valve, they want you to slowly crack this loose, and then the gauge drops. So we have no leak, we pressure tested. Now this procedure is for every vehicle now. They have the old style, you know, ones that you can pump instead of putting air to them, which is still just as good. These are small systems, but when you're working on trucks and stuff, 
um, and mid-range stuff, you know, they have um, six to eight gallon systems and, you know, you'll be pumping all day by hand to do it. So these are very convenient, you know, a couple hundred dollars to buy this. You could get it for a lot less than Harbor Freight, um, but they're great tools. So we've got it released. We're going to take it off now and then we'll double check our coolant. We'll run it outside. We're obviously going to have to let it burp. We force some coolant down into the hole now because we pressurize it. So we'll top this off. We'll um, get the duct work back on and we'll run on outside and wait for the thermostat to open and then top it off. That's, I was telling uh, Chris that. Okay, we're putting our duct work back in here. Slip this on. Slip this side on. We gotta get our clamp back around here. Ah, look at I took too much of the clamp. Hey, you did it. Why I gotta. <laughs> so there's notches in this thing. You see the notch on this side over here, and the clamp has to fit into the notches. Okay, so we got it back on there. Where's the notch on the other side? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see it. See it right here. Oh uh, yeah. So we'll line that up. Hey, I think you're off on your notch. What? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. I guess we'll turn it for you. Put in the <laughs> Better. Yeah, it's better. I'll feel. I'll sleep better tonight, Steve. Okay. <laughs> it's all about you sleeping. Okay. If I'm not sleeping, maybe I'll call you. <laughs> Wake you up. <laughs> all right. So this side's tight too. We got it all pressurized. Everything's back together. The hose isn't rubbing on anything. So everything's back in the right place. We're gonna run it outside, let it burp, and then um, clear the fault code on it and see if the code comes back. All right, so we're all done. The temperature is right in the middle of the day. Heat's nice and hot, and uh, should be all set.